Hello, and welcome. Today, we're going to be making an enclosure for this beautiful animal, the Juxia, as requested by Wasted. Thank you for your comment and suggestion, Wasted. I hope you enjoy the build. Now, this animal, the Juxia, is actually a close relative of the Parasyrotherium. So when you go on the game here, Prehistoric Kingdom, um, when you click on the Parasyrotherium, you will be, you will have three different options to choose from. So here is the medium-sized uh, Parasyrotherium, and here, of course, is the classic, the largest one. But we today are going to be making an enclosure for the smallest, the Juxia. So let's get a male and a female there, so they're not lonely, and let's get on with this build shall we come on so here we are in costa rica now i've chosen this map because these animals actually lived in tropical rainforests um, so costa rica is the perfect place to build a habitat for these creatures uh, and also uh, wasted has suggested that we build a huge a huge jungle habitat uh, for this animal so I'm, I'm not going to go too big though because uh, I don't want to, to obviously make it a massive enclosure with just two tiny creatures well they're not tiny but uh, for the animals in this game they are relatively small so we're starting off with this little hide a little hut where the guests can come in and uh, look out the windows and get a nice view of the animals uh, we're just putting in some support beams in here uh, to make it all look like it's uh, sturdy and will actually stand up. Um, yeah, and this is also providing a bit of shade for the guests because it, it would be rather hot out here in the humid jungle. So we're just uh, giving the guests a bit of a, a relief as well. And uh, also for the animals as well because we have just put in a, a little um, umbrella shading area for them to to get out of the, the sun but we're also going to put in plenty of uh, plants and vegetation lots of trees to provide cover for them as well uh, so I'm just going to put a, some signs up here and some information and uh, just going to get rid of that gap at the bottom there smoothing it all down that's better and we'll put in a few benches for the guests to have a sit down, sit back and enjoy the lovely view through the glass panels. Uh, a few bins in there as well to keep the zoo nice and tidy. And now we'll just put in a nice path inside. Lovely. Very nice. And a path leading to the entrance as well. So now I'm just going to try and make this feel a bit more uh, immersed in the jungle. So we're going to get some bamboo and put this at the side of the hide. Uh, so it feels like you're peeking out from an open clearing in the jungle, uh, these animals. This, this section I'm going to have a bit of a, an opening um, because otherwise you would never see the animals. So we're going to have a bit of an opening here, this area, and then the rest of the enclosure is pretty much going to be uh, you know, thick jungle, because we do want to make this habitat, um, you know, suitable for them. And you can see there on the top of that hide, I've just put a, a little bit of a, an opening, a little bit of, to let the air out, a bit of ventilation, because we don't want the guests to be baking inside that, uh, that hut. Uh, and a few termite mounds as well. You can see I put in the distance there, whether they would have ate termites or not, we're not sure. Uh, but I do think it, it suits the environment, so yes, it does look rather nice. And we're just going to put in some jungle trees now on those rocks. Uh, those are uh, the rocks I've just chose to have a bit of greenery on them, so they suit a jungle. Lovely. And a few little plants there to blend it all in. Now, I'm just looking here at what fence to use, because uh, we don't want it to small that they can hop over um, but I think that fence is just right it's enough that the guests can see the animals I imagine they'd be able to pop their heads over but I I don't think they pose much of a threat to the guests I think they might be quite quite friendly they might get used to the guests as long as the guests don't uh, feed them 
um, then we're all right. We don't want them getting fed any junk food. I'm just going to put some vines in here so it really looks um, like the jungle is really overgrown. Thick vines drooping through the trees. Some bamboo here um, growing around the rocks. Uh, we really want to make an explosion of plants in the corners. A nice log here where a dead tree has possibly fell down. Um, lovely. So, the jungle is coming on now. And uh, before I made this build, I thought I'm going to have to do some research on this animal because, I'm not going to lie, I had no idea that it even existed. <laughs> I know, terrible. Um, but yes, I, I've never heard of this animal before. Um, not until I saw it on this game. This is the first time, the first place I saw it was on Prehistoric Kingdom. Um, and I think it's great that they've actually chose this animal because they're going for animals that are, are less well known as well. You know, we've got the classics like Tyrannosaurus Rex and, you know, Triceratops, Brachiosaurus, the classic dinosaurs. Uh, but to go for something that you don't really know, I think is good because it's, it's bringing these animals into the light. Um, and it's, it's, it's teaching us about new creatures that once uh, roamed on the planet, so I think it's good. Uh, so yeah, I had to do my research because I thought I have no idea where this animal lived, what kind of environment it lived in. Um, so I had to do a little bit of uh, looking around. So uh, let's get up some facts about this creature. Uh, now it lived in China, um, in densely lush tropical forests. So we're going to have to make this uh, rainforest very, very thick with vegetation and lush. Plenty of uh, plants for them to go foraging and, and collect their food. Um, now it uh, says that it is um, an early uh, intracathere, so basically this animal um, is probably later on going to evolve into creatures like the, the classic intracathere. Um, so yeah, oh and here you can just see I'm, I'm building a shelter for them, um, because I think they need to have somewhere where they can rest and get out of that intense heat uh, from the the humid jungle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an entrance for them to walk in and an entrance for the guests to walk in and we'll have a, a wall down the middle where it separates the guests from the uh, from the animals and I put a little bit of bedding in there because it possibly may get cold at night the temperature may drop so we want to make sure that they are nice and warm and also comfy as well. They don't want to just lie on the ground. They want some a little bit of comfort. And we're going to put these um, these paint paintings up uh, around the room. Uh, I was going to put it on this side, but then I thought, actually, no. Do you know what? I think it would suit better uh, if we put them on the side that they're actually in, because that's where the guests are going to be looking in anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, you see this in a lot of zoos sometimes, um, and I think it's better than just looking at a blank wall. So we're just going to put them up there. It's just trying to make sure that you get the angle right, so it's definitely uh, in line with the wall. Um, but yeah, I think it makes it look a, a little bit uh, cooler. Looks cool, yeah, I like it. So, what else do we know about this mysterious creature. Well, scientists have only found a few skeletons and they're unsure if they were solitary or if they lived in small groups or even possibly herds. Who knows? Um, at first I was only going to have two, but then I thought this enclosure uh, has been requested to be huge. So I thought maybe we're best getting a few more. So I do get two more individuals later on. Uh, let's just hope that they don't fight. <laughs> uh, so here I'm just going to put in some logs for a bit of support, some support beams uh, to keep the roof from caving in on the gas. We don't, we don't want that now, do we? So we're just going to put in a few logs to try and make it look like it's an actual building rather than just cracking the roof on. Uh, and we'll put a few benches here at the back so the guests can sit down and enjoy these beautiful animals. 
Um, lovely stuff. It's coming. It's coming together. So, let's get up a few more facts about this mysterious creature. So, this animal lived in the Eocene. I hope I said that correctly. The Eocene time period. Um, I'm a lot better with dinosaur dates and times than I am with uh, with mammals, but yes, this time period uh, started from 56 million years ago uh, and ended 33 million years ago. So 56, the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. Uh, so this is now 9 million years after the death of the dinosaurs. So nine million years have passed by and the mammals have seen the gap in the market. There's no more dinosaurs to compete with and they've just completely exploded and just took over everything. They've taken over on the land. They've even taken over in the water. And uh, speaking of water, let me just get a drink. tell you it's thirsty work doing this building all these habitats for these extinct creatures uh, so yes the uh, the mammals took over the oceans um, if you've uh, if you've watched walking with beasts uh, the first episode there is a, a creature called the lambacetus and this animal it looks like a crocodile but actually it's a mammal and uh, this creature is the ancestor of all the whales and dolphins that you see swimming in the oceans today and uh, it's crazy when you think about it uh, oh here I'm just gonna put in a, a doorway for the the staff to be able to get in and clean the enclosure for them we put some wheelbarrows and uh, a brush and a hose just for them to to clean up all the muck and the uh, put some fresh bedding in uh, so yes um, so the mammals took over the oceans and um, when you think about it it's, it's crazy because um, when you look at when the comet hit it didn't just wipe out the dinosaurs it also wiped out many different types of marine reptiles so it's like as soon as they disappeared the mammals saw the gap in the market and said right guys come on let's go no messing about and filled in the niche uh, that the marine reptiles uh, once had in fact the only one that managed to survive out of those marine reptiles was the uh, turtle um, everything else disappeared the mosasaurs the elasmosaurs all the different types of plesiosaurs all gone only the turtles remain today. Fascinating. So their shelter is complete and now it's time to create uh, somewhere where they can get a drink from. So we're going to have a section that comes down a little bit lower here and put in a nice little pond for them. Somewhere where they can quench their thirst, maybe have a little wallow or a swim in the water to cool off from the intense heat from the jungle and either side of the pond there you can see I've just put two bridges in uh, what I want to do is have uh, one river coming in bringing in fresh water fresh clean water for them to to drink from and then the lake will then uh, there'll be another river on the other side where the water will exit and uh, I'm gonna have a bit of a a small waterfall um, where the water's going to not not too big, nothing too fancy, uh, just something where the water can escape, and uh, that will get rid of all the, the dirty water. We don't want the animals drinking uh, stagnant, dirty water now, do we? So yeah, just smooth all that in. Uh, some more jungle trees and a nice dead tree as well uh, there at the edge of the pond somewhere for them to have a nice scratch on and yes just fill that in with some plants to blend it all in and make it feel like we're in a jungle so yeah um so as we were saying the the mammals have now took over all these niches uh, that the dinosaurs once had 
Uh, one of the things that they didn't quite grasp, well, they kind of did, but I think there's one animal that mastered them a lot better at it, and that would be the skies. Um, we do have bats, but I would say that the birds are the lords of the skies. Uh, they've completely took over this niche. When you think about it, it used to be the, the flying reptiles, the pterosaurs. Now when they went, so all the marine reptiles went, the dinosaurs went, and then the flying reptiles went as well. But this was claimed by the birds. The mammals didn't quite get there in time. The birds um, beat them to it. And when you think about it, birds actually are, in fact, dinosaurs. So they're still here amongst us. Uh, but maybe not the, the cool ones. The cool ones died out, but there are some pretty cool birds. Birds are still fascinating creatures, and they're very well adapted to what they do. Uh, I, I think they're probably the best things to ever uh, adapt for flight. Uh, when you think about you know, how skilled they are at flying, uh, when you look at all the different variations of them as well, there's so many different types of birds. You know, you've got falcons, owls, um, hummingbirds, you know, and even ones on the ground as well, some that are flightless, huge. They're, they're more like a dinosaur than anything, really. You know, look at an ostrich. It's just like a big Gallimimus or something. <laughs> Uh, and here you can see we're just putting in that stream now so putting in a few boulders and just trying to see where the water can work where it would try and naturally flow um, so i'm just trying to work that out now um, put a nice log in there that may have been washed down um, from further upstream possibly and then just fill in those gaps with some some stones and some rocks there we go, lovely. And try and make it look like the, the water's starting to get a bit uh, splashing against the rocks there as it's picking up a bit of momentum and some splashes at the bottom as well. And I'm uh, just deleting a few lilies there because uh, lilies don't tend to grow well near fast flowing water. They, pretend, uh, they prefer um, still areas like ponds and lakes and stuff like that. Um, and here I'm going to we're, we're attempting to build our own bridge uh, rather than using the ones that are in the game so we're just going to use these two big logs either end for support and then just get this beam and stretch it and then mirror it and just connect it both there and then I deleted the other one I thought I might as well just copy and paste it so I'm going to now just put in some um, railings just so the guests uh, don't fall off into the into the river um, just use some smaller logs there for that lovely nice stuff I do like the way that bridge looks to be honest I think it looks rather nice now we'll just put in some flooring for it lovely and then just some stairs at the end so they can climb up onto the bridge and make sure this time that the actual logs are touching the floor <laughs> it always looks like they're touching and then you actually look from a different angle and it's like oh no they're not uh, and we're just going to put in some um, triangular supports at the sides just so it looks very sturdy we don't want the bridge collapsing with the guests on it and now we'll just connect it to the path. Lovely. Yes, um, coming together now this. I'm, I'm liking the way it's looking. You can just see the Juxia just taking a drink there in the background from his new pond. So I think he likes it. And we'll just put in a few more rocks here. Lovely. But yes, um, it is crazy, isn't it, how the mammals have just, you know, took over this niche. And we're still living in that age now. You can see there's a lot of different species of mammals that have just took over the planet. What I find very interesting, though, is is just how they, they take over these niches in very similar ways. Um, so, like the marine reptiles went and they took over that niche with the dolphins and whales. Um, 
but also how some of them look very similar. They're not, not only just taking over uh, the habitat, but also almost taking the place. Um, so for instance, like when you look at um, animals that like um, the dinosaurs, the kind of body plans they had. So uh, take it for sauropods, for example. And now you look at giraffes, you know, they're not related. Well, everything is technically related, um, but not closely related. You know, they're not coming off the same branch of the family tree. They've evolved this way by themselves. And I just think it's fascinating, you know, look at, you look at giraffes, they've come up with the same type of plan. Even this animal in here has got a long neck, you know, the Indricotheres, they have long necks to feed off uh, high, high branches from trees. It is a very good um, technique, you know, because then you're not with competition from animals on the ground. You can feed off uh, plants in the trees instead. Um, but it's with other animals as well when you look at a, a rhino for instance it's got its horn and then you look at a triceratops you know that's developed a horn as well you know, it's, it's, it's really cool how animals have a you know evolution can make things look very similar um, yeah it, it really is fascinating uh, so here we're just gonna corner this section off with some um, fencing so the guests don't wander off into the bushes and try and make those paths look as smooth as possible I do like to make the paths look nice and curved and um, just make it look nice and you know the flow I want it to flow well as you walk through the habitat and I'm just putting in a few purple flowers there just to add a bit of color and variety of different plants because there's so many different plants in the jungles and in the rainforest. So we want to make sure there's a nice variety of uh, different vegetation that the guests can look at. And uh, just making those plants go crazy here. We are in a jungle. So, you know, the plants grow very, very big and lots of different varieties because of how much rainfall they get. Um, so yeah. There we go, it's coming along. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna lean some of the trees here uh, because they're right by the river. So the, the soil might be um, giving way a little bit. If you see trees by rivers, sometimes they're, they're almost uh, falling into the river. In fact, some do, some do fall into the river. So uh, in fact, that's what I'm gonna do later on. So to corner off this area so they can't walk down the river and get out of their exhibit, We've got a waterfall, but on the other side, I don't want to just put another waterfall in. I'm going to put in a fallen tree uh, so they can't actually get out of the other side. And now we're just putting in a um, nice section um, of the pond where the guests can get a good view. A uh, nice little beach area here. Lovely. Yes, it's, it's coming together liking the way it's looking mm -hmm. so let's talk a little bit more about this creature what kind of animals did it share its home with well there's one creature um, that the Juxia probably would wouldn't have wanted to bump into in fact I don't think anyone would want to bump into this creature um, this animal is the largest carnivore the largest mammal carnivore, sorry, uh, to ever walk the earth. And this animal is none other than the famous Andrew Sarkis. Now, this creature is absolutely huge, and it lived in China at the same time period as the Juxia. So this was probably, this creature probably hunted Juxia. Um, it was probably the prey of this animal. Uh, and this animal is just absolutely bizarre and it's massive. Um, so let's look at the, the top predator today on planet Earth. The largest carnivore on Earth today is the polar bear. Now the polar bear um, is up to three meters long. Now that's a male, so that's the, they're a little bit bigger than the females. So that's the largest ones we're talking of there. On average, they might be a little bit smaller, um, but the largest um, polar bears reach up to about three meters. 
Now, the Androsarcus is 3.6 meters, so it's got half, just over half a meter on the polar bear. And um, the height-wise, uh, again, male polar bears about 1.3 meters to the shoulder. Uh, Androsarcus is 1.8, so it's a lot bigger uh, than a polar bear. And um, this animal is not actually what, what is it? Well, it's not a bear. It's not a wolf. It's not. Um, it's not a cat. It's not from the big cat family. Uh, it's actually more related to hippos and whales, um, and it actually has hooves as well. So it's it's such a bizarre animal, um, but it is a, a very big carnivore. Uh, it is actually on um, Walking with Beasts. It's on the episode with, uh, I think it's the Basilosaurus. So the Basilosaurus, which evolved from the, um, from what's it called now? I forgot the name now. I just said it a minute ago. Um, from the first episode, the, the Lambacetus. Uh, so the Lambacetus later evolves into the Basilosaurus. And on that episode, uh, we see the Androsarcus uh, galloping because it's got hooves uh, down the beach and I think it eats a turtle and uh, later on it's hunting uh, I can't remember what they're called but they're, they're like big rhinos but instead of horns they have like big clubs on their on their nose um, but yeah I think it was hunting one of them and in that I love the design that they've done for it it was it had like a, an orangey coat with black spots um, and it has a very long, narrow head. You certainly won't want to get bit uh, by this animal. Its head is absolutely huge. Um, when you look in comparison to a human, uh, you certainly won't want to get bit uh, by this animal. It would definitely do some damage. Uh, so yeah, that's the kind of animal that may have hunted um, the Juxia. Uh, however, it does say that this animal, I think the fossil was found um, by coastlines, so they think that it may have eaten things like uh, turtles and uh, shellfish and stuff. Maybe it was scavenging on the beach for for things like I mean, a few bears do that, don't they? Today, bears have a a very uh, varied diet. They'll eat anything, bears, won't they? They'll eat uh, berries. They'll come down and fish for salmon. They'll also hunt uh, big, large prey as well. Um, so yeah, it is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, so this is one of the creatures that would have shared the habitat and who knows, they may even bring um, this creature into the game possibly in the future. I do hope so. Um, it would be great to make um, a large habitat, like a wild reserve and just let these creatures uh, do their own thing and see how they interact as well. Ah, so here we're putting in a, a little um, viewing platform in the canopy uh, just to get you a nice view over the exhibit. Uh, and we're going to put a little staircase taking you up into the canopy because um, I think it's it's quite a nice place to be in the, in the canopy of the jungle. Lots going on up there, lots of different creatures living up there. I think we would have many different reptiles and possibly snakes and things living up in the canopy. Lots of different types of birds. Just have to make sure that we put these railings on uh, to keep the guests safe from falling off. Lovely. So yeah, there we go. It's coming together. And then we'll just tilt those and stretch them a bit so that they fit onto the sides of the stairwell. Lovely. Oh, and by the way, I hope you all enjoyed Prehistoric Planet. Uh, I won't give any spoilers, I won't talk about any scenes, I don't want to uh, spoil it for anyone, but uh, yes, it was absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> I do hope that they make uh, a third one. I know, I know the second one's only just come out. So I'll probably have to rewatch it again. Um, but yeah, I hope this becomes a thing now uh, because you know they, they are very enjoyable to watch. You know, I love watching Planet Earth and stuff like that and now to watch the same kind of style uh, documentary 
just like planet earth but actually about dinosaurs uh, it's just absolutely fantastic and to see them as they as they would have been you know it, it's just brilliant um, seeing them as animals and not monsters you know behaving like real animals would i just think it's fantastic and with the latest science and uh discoveries as well so this is the most um the closest we're going to get at this point in time to seeing these animals as they actually would have been um, so it really is just fantastic so yeah i hope you all enjoyed it and here we're just putting in some more trees and um, plants to try and make this really look like a jungle <laughs> you can't you can't go overboard with plants uh, we do want to make the animals feel at home we want them to have plenty of space to to go out and forage for food and when they're inside in their uh, their shelter the keepers could uh, go out into the enclosure and actually hide food for them to, to find maybe put some in some logs maybe put some uh, up on some tree branches so they have to try and uh, you know use their necks and stretch up and, and try and uh, grab them you know to keep them stimulated make sure that they've got plenty to do i do think that's good when they, when uh, they do that in zoos to try and hide the food and make the animals have to go out and find it and uh rather than just putting it in there you know they come out and it's right there for them um i'm just putting these nice little plants up here to because the plants when you actually uh are putting them down um, a lot of the time if you put rocks there and it, you can see it slopes down there the plants won't actually stay on the rock it'll go straight through and t plant itself down on the ground and uh, we don't want that we want it to look like it's actually growing on the rocks so you've got to uh, put them in individually there uh, which takes a little bit longer but uh, it's that attention to detail that makes it look uh, like it really is. You can see on that one there, the ground is just starting to slope down, but it, you can just get away with it there to make it look like the plants are actually growing on the rocks. Oh, and here, um, that happened by accident that I made these rocks into a pattern. And when I lifted it up, I was like, oh, that looks like the entrance to a cave. And I thought, I can't miss this opportunity. I couldn't resist. I thought, we're going to have to make a cave. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna make a cave for the guests to walk through. Um, and this is where I got a little idea. What we're going to do is, as you walk through the cave, we're going to have a little spy hole um, looking out onto um, a section where the animals are probably com going to come and visit quite a lot uh, we're going to make a salt lick for them uh, so you see this in in many jungles actually um i've seen it with uh, i think it's elephants and i think it was um i can't remember whereabouts it was in the world uh, but i saw monkeys coming down and hogs and stuff like that pigs uh, all coming down to drink from this salt lick uh, and it's basically the minerals that are in this salt lick so it's like um, a clay deposit where water comes and and they can come down and get a drink from that and, and actually lick the clay and uh, I, th I think parrots have done it as well they actually eat some of the clay uh, because in that clay is minerals uh, salts and things like that that the animals need you know some um, maybe they're missing some nutrition from their diet so I thought that would be something nice to, to just put in um, something unique to put into the exhibit um, and we're going to put that just at the corner of this cave with a little uh, we'll have a spy hole and also a glass panel uh, where the guests can, can get a good look if you hang around that area you're probably going to see the jukes here because they're probably going to come up there for not only a drink but to get their their salts and their minerals um, so this is the upper section um, that we talked about before uh, just putting in some some dead branches and things on these rocks uh, and a few more <laughs> jungle trees this is going to be where most of the jungle is going to grow um, down below is where the, the open area is and i'm just getting him in there just so i can get a feel for uh, how big he is in this area and how much vegetation i need to put in but 
but I really do want to make sure I give him a, a nice um, tropical environment because that's the kind of habitat that they lived in and uh, we must make sure that the animals needs are met and then we'll put a little bit of this um, bark um, terrain down all the wood chips and bits of broken leaves that are rotting on the floor rather than grass and there we go lovely stuff and just try and blend that so it goes down to the sand a bit better like some of the sand would have been dragged up on their feet as they've walked up there and some of the chips would have been brought down as well so just trying to blend that in there oh and here's the cave uh, so there's a some pre-made uh, archways and windows uh, that you can get on the on, on the section where all the rocks are so just put those in there uh, but yeah getting back to uh, prehistoric planet uh, I do hope that this becomes a thing now because there's so many areas that you can go into you know we've only seen um, the animals that lived during the last um, you know the last million years of the dinosaurs in the late Cretaceous period um, which is a classic place to start you know with Tyrannosaurus Rex and you know Triceratops and all those you know famous dinosaurs but uh, there's so much more so many more places we can go uh, when you think we can go to the Jurassic period you know see Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Allosaurus you know that I'd love to see um, you know a documentary about dinosaurs like that but even like to the tri Triassic showing how dinosaurs you know first came about and started evolving and not even dinosaurs we can go um, a little bit closer um, in back in time you know we don't have to go back that far we could actually look at uh, some of the mammals that used to live you know imagine a, an ice age episode you know seeing woolly mammoth and saber tooth and we could even have these animals in it as well we could have the the juxia um you know with there's, there's so many things that they can do uh, it really would be amazing to be able to see um and even go back even further in time when you think about it you know we could go um just like the walking with dinosaurs series they did walking with dinosaurs and they did walking with beasts and they thought oh right now we'll go back even further we'll go walking with monsters and show how animals evolved out of the sea and came out onto the land so i hope that uh that's where we go i'd like to see us go for, to many different time periods um of the history of life on earth it would be very very interesting but don't get me wrong, I am absolutely over the moon uh, that we even got a second uh, series of Prehistoric Planet. In fact, I'm, I'm over the moon that we even got one to begin with. It's absolutely fantastic. When you're a dinosaur fan and something like this comes out, it's just brilliant. Something to look forward to. Um, it, it Just to be able to see the animals, you know, the animation is just absolutely phenomenal people who've worked on the the animation of these creatures but not just the animation but actually getting them to look scientifically accurate is just brilliant so i am very i'm very grateful that we have these documentaries um that are being made because it's just it's great it's so entertaining to watch and it's so much fun and uh just to be able to look at them it's so beautiful to watch with your own eyes it's the closest you're going to get to seeing a t-rex you know it's the closest you're going to get to seeing these animals behaving as they actually would uh, in the wild so i'm very very happy um, that these documentaries have come out so yeah i really i really enjoyed it it was absolutely marvelous i enjoyed all the episodes uh, gave me some uh, ideas and inspired me to make some more documentaries um, so yeah we will be uh, working on some more we did project patagonia that was a lot of fun uh, we just need to now um, get the shots and edit um, all the clips together to to fit the script um, but yeah so we'll be releasing some more documentaries in the future 
So yes, it's almost complete now. Um, we just need to finish off this section uh, where the salt lick is going to go. So I'm going to put in a plane of glass here where the guests can take a seat on the bench and just watch the juxia as they come to their salt lick for a drink. But I'm going to put a few vines in because I want to uh, give them a little bit of privacy. I don't want the guests just um, to be able to stare at them. And the chucks is like, do you mind? I'm trying to uh, drink from my salt lick here. Uh, so we're going to put a few in just to give them a bit of privacy, you know. And um, a few trees for a bit of shade whilst they drink. And uh, now we're going to put in uh, the water. Um, only a small bit, I don't want it too large uh, and this could be just dripping down the rocks this water just making this small little pool and then we're going to use uh, some clay uh, and a little bit of mud, so a mixture of mud and clay uh, and just delete the plants that are growing in it so there you go, there's the little salt lick lovely and uh, what I did here is I thought, you know what, I'm going to put a tree that's fell into the uh, salt lake. Just to, uh, as if this big tree here has just collapsed into the, into the water. Just to give it a bit of, you know, a bit of character. Lovely. So yeah, I uh, hope this is big enough. Uh, it's only now that I'm looking back and I'm realising how massive uh, this enclosure is so they've been completely spoiled these jugs are there they have loads of uh, area to roam around jungle got their own pond um, got their own salt lick you know got their own shelter so yes they really are being spoiled I'm just putting in a few different colors here just to add a bit of variety to the um, the enclosure and here we're going to put on the, the top of the cave um, and this is one of the hardest things to do when you're trying to make a cave it's because you can see the outside what it looks like but you can't see the inside so you may build it and it looks wonderful from the outside oh wow that looks brilliant and then you go inside and it looks an absolute mess and then you've got to try and change things inside to make it work so there's the uh, the entrance or the exit depending on which way you've come in um, and then you've got your um, your viewing area for the the salt lick and then a little spy hole around the corner and then you can walk out back to the other section of the enclosure lovely so we just got to squash these down and make it look as, as natural as we can which is uh, quite difficult because when you're inside the cave trying to get the camera to move to the angle you need to see you can't it's not like you're actually stood there you can just look up you've got to try and twist the mouse and try and find does that look all right um probably when i'm giving the tour of this i'll find loads of mistakes um i always find something that i've missed um, but it, it's looking quite good I'm, I'm happy with the way it's uh the way it's coming and we'll just corner off this section with fencing Lovely. so yeah um, the tour um, as always I'll be putting out the tour tomorrow uh, and that'll be a more in-depth look at the build uh, as if you were a guest going for a wander around the park um, and you can uh, get some nice shots of the animals at the end just watching them enjoy their enclosure so uh, that'll be coming out tomorrow um, and if you're watching, not watching this as this has come out, um, I'll put a link in the end of the video uh, just to show um, where you can watch it. Oh, and there's a dead tree, a lovely dead tree for them to have a scratch on for the birds to make their nests in. Some woodpeckers, maybe, might uh, be able to drill a hole in the dead wood and. Oh, and here we're, we're going to have a little toilet stop uh, because I thought, you know what, this is a really big enclosure and when, when you're walking around the last thing you want to do is go oh god I need the toilet, I've got to go back and then you, <laughs> you have to trek all the way back just to go to the toilet so we're going to have a nice little toilet stop here and here I'm just going to have some um, 
these lovely little I don't know how you'd explain what they're called what are they they're like um, I don't know just an overhanging um, platform with the lovely greenery just growing over and some lovely little fairy lights there beautiful uh, so I'm just gonna put these in just so uh, the guests can have a sit down it maybe if you're waiting for someone that's in the bathroom um, you don't want to be waiting out in the Sun or perhaps you just want to get in the shade get out of that Sun for a bit and just sit back and enjoy the jungle ambiance and uh, oh, of course we'll put some vending machines in here so the guests can have a, a drink stay hydrated oh and here I'm just getting um, this um, silhouette of the animal and I'm just lining it up with the actual creature just so I, I know I've got it to the, the right size and I'm just gonna put this on the um, the front of the of their uh, house their, their shelter just so uh, you know what it is and I'm also gonna put one over here as well um, as a sign and I'm gonna put its name up as well just so people know what creature they're coming to um, if, to be honest I should put more of these in um, because there's lots of different silhouettes of all the different species I think and also the name as well a lot of people are like what's that I've never heard of that before because I hadn't heard of it uh, so there'll be a lot of people that won't have heard of this creature before um, so I think it's a good thing to just be able to um, you know uh, put this on so when they come around the corner like oh right I've never heard of this before this is a new creature wow um, so yeah just um, putting in the name there just get all the uh, letters uh, similar size and try and get them straight there lovely and I think to be honest this exhibit is uh, that large you could probably have more creatures uh, sharing this habitat with the Juxia. Uh, maybe those huge rhinos that we see in um, uh, walking, walking with Beasts, the ones that the Andrew Sarkis was trying to uh, hunt, I think one of the babies I think it was, and the mother comes over and bashes the Andrew Sarkis out of the way. Yes, fantastic, uh, fantastic show. Takes me back to my childhood just thinking about it. So I'm just going to put in a few trees here just to um, really, I know it's not in the habitat, but it just immerses you in that jungle a little bit more. And uh, here we're going to have some uh, viewing platforms. And I'm going to put a little bit of, um, just smoothing that path there so it curves around a bit nicer. There we go, that's better. Uh, and a, a bit of uh, greenery growing on the top to just give a bit more shade. Um, because we don't want the guests baking in the sun as they're trying to look at the animals in their enclosure so uh, that'll provide some nice cover there from the sun and some binoculars just so they can get a good view and a few benches just to have a nice rest you can't have enough benches um, especially when you've got such a big enclosure to walk around you want to make sure there's plenty of places that they can uh, that they can rest Ah, so lovely we'll just put a bit more path in here and here in this green section I'm thinking a nice little restaurant and some chairs on the grass somewhere for the, the guests to take a seat and uh, yeah just uh, get some refreshments after their nice long trek through the jungle lovely it's a little picnic area for them lovely and a few bins uh, now here what we're going to do is I've just got this statue of a, an Edmontosaurus and I'm going to change it into a nice little water fountain um, just by using some um, waterfalls but stretching them up so it looks like the water's actually shooting up and then falling back down um, it's just trying to get it all in line make sure there's no bits sticking out uh, delete all them flowers and then just have a few sections of the waters then pouring off uh, into the to the sides there uh, now this is psychological this because as the guests come round the corner they're going to hear the sound of the water and then they're going to be thinking uh, do you know what 
I'm going to go to that vending machine and get a drink. So, <laughs> um, they may spend a little bit more money and we get a few more profits coming into the zoo. So, they'll hear that water and then go running off to get a drink from the vending machine. I know, it's terrible. Um, but... Uh, you no, know, really what it is, is because I think that section just looked a bit empty, it looked like it needed something there, um, and I think what better than a nice water fountain, uh, so you can just sit back and relax and listen to the water cascading down and uh, just chill while you're waiting for whoever to come out of the bathroom and then you can continue on uh, through the cave or maybe just come through the cave uh, it's no one-way system we, you can go whichever way you like you might just come out of the cave and you can just take a seat uh, by the water feature lovely and here all i'm doing is filling in the backdrop uh, so it feels like you're really in, in a jungle um, so i'm just trying to and make it look like it's it's not just you know there's nothing there you're inside a jungle it's not just the enclosure uh, and we're just doing the inside of the cave now which is very difficult to do um, just trying to make sure everything is definitely um, you know looks correct looks right it is hard because you're in a confined space and you're trying to get the camera right trying to check that everything looks okay um, but yeah I'm quite happy with that I think it looks okay I think it looks good um, so the guests can come through here get out of the heat and just, uh, just look through the spy hole of, um, of where the salt lick is get a good view of the juxia I'm just going to change those because you wouldn't have moss really growing in here um, inside the cave because there wouldn't be as much light coming in so uh, and just make sure there's no gaps as well Hopefully. there we go nicely does it so yeah um, this build is coming close to finish now it's almost done it's just basically now finishing off the finishing touches uh, we have the main template done we've just got to get the fine details in like this here you can see that there's just a bit of a, a drop uh, and it doesn't look quite right it looks like all that sand will just fall down so I'm just going to put in uh, some rocks here just to make that level look uh, more natural and then just fill in a few plants and uh, make the terrain look right lovely so yes, I hope you've enjoyed this build. I, I do love making uh, jungle habitats. It's one of my favorite habitats to make. I think it's just because there's so much going on, uh, all the different types of plants and just the lushness of it. You know, I think that's why they take so long to build because it's not just like a flat map, um, like a desert map or something like that. It's got, you know, a lot going on, loads of different vegetation and, uh, you know, on the ground and up in the canopy as well. But yeah, I'm liking how it looks. I think it looks quite nice. Um, but yeah, if you have any more uh, ideas or suggestions or requests of a certain species or a certain type of theme that you'd like to see, uh, just let me know in the comments below. And then I'm just putting in a piece of glass just to make it look like the water fountain is actually going into some water. And then we'll corner off here with some more fencing. Lovely. Yes. I think, um, oh, another another toilet stop. Just uh, outside of the shelter. Lovely. But yeah, I hope we do get some more uh, mammals in this game. We do have, uh, I think it's two more creatures that they've teased towards of what's going to be coming out. Um, I'm trying to remember what they look like now. It was, it was only like a shot of the skin that they've shown. They're not really giving much away. Um, I'm hoping that one is a Velociraptor. Uh, I'm sure they said that it's very famous. It's a very famous and well-known uh, creature from pop culture so I believe that will be a velociraptor and that will be a great build to do um, you know a nice desert build something like that 
and over here we're just putting in the river uh, that's going to go to this lovely lake um, just to immerse you again in the habitat. I know this isn't actually part of the enclosure uh, but that's just going to uh, go off there to that section and just corner off this now with the uh, with the walls and the fences. Lovely. Oh, and I've uh, I've just remembered. Uh, Wasted did not just request uh, for a huge jungle exhibit uh, with the Juxia, but also asked for another creature, um, the Celodonta, uh, which basically is a, a genus of woolly rhinoceros. Now, I don't think this creature would suit this build. I think. Uh, the woolly rhino would probably pass out from heat heat exhaustion in this in this jungle um so we're not going to put him in here but we will be making an enclosure for the woolly rhino in the future so don't worry uh, but i think we'll have to make uh, more of a, a snowy habitat uh, or a tundra habitat or even maybe a grassland um i don't think a jungle would quite suit uh, that animal um, and it's mad as well that they're actually closely related because these animals are related to rhinoceros and this is a the Celodonta is a, a woolly a woolly rhinoceros so they're closely related animals um, which is fascinating um, so I can understand why you know having them together to see these two animals that are closely related but I just don't think uh, they would suit living in the jungle so uh, Yes, we'll, we'll we'll have to make a build for those in the future. And here I'm just putting in some of those lovely rocks and some lilies for this uh, lake at the side. And here, uh, this lake, um, you can see I'm right near the edges of the map there. And just before you get to the edge of the map, you can't build uh, or put anything in that section. So the lake was right up at the edge, so I had to make the lake a little bit smaller um, and then put some trees in to really, you know, fill in that area so you couldn't tell that that was at the edge of the map. And that's what I'm just doing here as well. I'm just putting in some trees um, to really immerse you in the jungle again. I don't just like to make the habitat that they're actually in, but also where the guests are walking around too. So I put some trees up here on the on the cliffs. And now as they're walking through that path, they feel like they're not just looking into an enclosure, but they're actually in it, you know, they're actually inside a huge jungle enclosure. So yeah, uh, this is coming close to finish now. Uh, all it is now is putting in the, the finishing touches, just the finishing details. Uh, just to make sure that it all um, looks natural and you know finished to a good standard but there'll probably be something that uh, I forget it's only at the end when you notice the mistakes you come to the end and you think oh I forgot to do this I forgot to do that like the railings or something or the path will be have a hole in it or something or a spike coming through it or something like that uh, so it's just this, it's literally just now this section here with, um, just going to finish it off with a few rocks just to make it feel like it's all enclosed in one zone. So just put all these down here and then we just need to uh, f corner off the, uh, the river where the water's coming in so that the Juxia just can't walk off, so we're going to put a dead tree that's going to collapse into the into the river, and uh, just bring all that level the floor up there, so I can just put trees on top of there, so it looks like the the, the jungle is carrying on uh, further on than uh, just what the guests can see. So yeah, there we have it. It is coming close to finish. I must say I'm, I'm rather pleased with this. It is a huge build. Um, I'm only realising now how long it took me to, to do. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very big one, this one. Uh, now here we're going to put in a nice restaurant for the guests. Uh, they probably will need this after all that walking and trekking through the jungle. They'll have worked up 
quite the appetite. So uh, I'm, here I'm just going to put in a few flowers in this nice flower bed, put a bit of colour in there, and this will attract the guests' attention as well. So they'll be looking over, oh, what's all that beautiful colour over there? And before you know it, they'll be inside ordering food. Um, so yeah and it looks very nice as well it looks very pretty um and this restaurant is actually one that's already built in the game so you don't have to build your own buildings you can just uh choose a selection uh, and at this point i built so much i thought yes i'm going to just get a restaurant that's already in the game um and it is a very nice restaurant i think they've also put some new buildings in as well um I think there's, a, there's some new shops and things like that, uh, and some new power um, buildings, things for, you know, like uh, powering up your park if you're playing on campaign mode, um, where you actually have to play with money and power things up and things like that. Um, so it'd be a bit like uh, Jurassic World, where you have to connect power stations and things like that, I think. Uh, I've not actually played like that yet, I've only played using creative mode, so it'll be interesting to see what that's like. Um, but this is what I normally like to do, and I normally like to just get creative and just build, you know, go crazy. Um, but it would be interesting to actually run a park and, uh, you know, have to manage it like a business. Uh, so, that, yeah, that's something we'll have to do. Um, and now I'm just going to put some fencing here so they don't wander off into the woods and make that path um, not going off the into the woods there so it looks nice and neat so it stays behind the the fence so yes we're coming uh, close to finish now we're almost there <laughs> um, all we all that's left to do is this section here now where the uh, we're gonna put the fallen tree and we're just gonna put some um, trees around here. That's all it's all about. You, you don't want any blank areas in the jungle because there would be no such thing as this in a in a hot, humid environment like this. Everywhere would just be teeming with, you know, life. There'd be plants growing everywhere. So I'm just trying to make sure all the gaps and edges, uh, you know, look right. So I'm just filling in some rocks there at the bottom few more trees you can never have too many trees in a jungle and that I like that rock it's a nice easy one to put in it's a nice curved shape so it just fits the way the rivers going around the corner there uh, rather than having to put loads of different rocks and you can just put that one in and uh, it's a, it just looks really natural as well the way it's already made on the game so we're gonna finish off here with a nice log or should I say a tree fallen tree Fallen giant uh, that's collapsed across the river and is blocking uh, the way for the juxia to get out. I'm just going to put this dead tree in here, but I'm going to tilt it as if it looks like the branches have all snapped and crashed onto the rocks. And uh, yeah, a few broken branches that may have fallen off and washed downstream. And then just this nice pile of rocks here to stop them from crawling underneath it. So there you have it. Lovely stuff. So there you have it. The enclosure is almost complete. All that's left to do is just finish off this river on the other side. And then we've basically cornered off all the areas that the guests are going to walk around. And uh, made it all look natural as if they're actually in the jungle uh, we've just got to make sure that it's all rendered properly and then it all looks nice and uh, natural as natural as we can possibly get it and um, what I'm going to do here is mix in a few uh, swamp trees because we're right near the edge of the map there and I don't want anyone to see through so I'm just going to put some swamp trees growing in the water there a little bit and I think they mix quite well don't they uh, a few swamp and jungle trees Put some lily pads down there on the lake, a bit of uh, greenery and some bulrushes growing by the uh, by the edges there of the water. And all we've got to do is just finish off with um, some rocks around the edges there so it all fits nicely. So yeah, as I said before guys, um, if you've got any ideas or anything you'd like to see, 
any uh, suggestions or requests, uh, themes that you'd like to see, or if it's just a species that you'd uh, like to see in the game a habitat for, uh, just let me know down in the comments. We do have a few um, builds in the pipeline that'll be coming out. Um, I know there's been some more suggestions of different animals that people would like to see, so we, we have got them in the in the list there to to make. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you, thank you for your comments, everyone. Thank you for your suggestions, and um, if you could, just please uh, leave a like uh, and a comment if you enjoyed the video down below, and don't forget to subscribe too. Um, it really does help the channel out, so thank you all very much for that. So, we're coming close now to the end. I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, don't forget that tomorrow, the full tour of the exhibit, more in-depth look at the habitat will be coming out. Uh, but if you're not watching this as the video has come out, uh, I'll leave a link at the end of the video where you can go watch it from there. So, once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.